Hello, Fremont City School District, and welcome to the Diversity and Inclusion segment. My name is Shari Mullen, and I'm the Director of Diversity and Inclusion for the City of Fremont. I'm excited today to have this opportunity to speak with you regarding diversity and inclusion, but more importantly, I'm excited to invite you in to help me do this great work by creating a diverse and inclusive environment for Fremont City Schools. As we get started on the presentation, I'm going to share my screen. Bear with me for a moment. Again, this presentation focuses on diversity and inclusion for Fremont City School District. And I am Shari Mullen. So you might ask, how did this come about? To give you a little history, when we decided to start working on diversity and inclusive initiatives, we pulled back and we looked at the data, the district profile for 2019-2020. The number of schools last year was nine. I did tweak that a little bit to be reflective of this year, which is seven schools. However, the enrollment for 2019-2020 was 3,519. And out of that 3,519 students in the school district, 72.4% are economically disadvantaged, 13.1% are students with disabilities. And one of the great eye openers is the student ethnicity is 43.3%. Wow, has the demographics of Fremont City Schools changed over the years. And looking at that, we wanted to make sure, does our hiring practices, our protocols, systems, curriculum, does, is that all reflective of our student ethnicity? So I sat down with Mr. Datweiler and his administrative team, and we decided the first thing to do in this great work of diversity and inclusion is to listen. We wanted to make sure everybody had a voice when we had this discussion. We wanted to listen to teachers, bus drivers, cooks, student support services. And in that listening stage, I wanted to sit down and ask four questions. What do we do well in terms of diversity and inclusion? What can we do better in terms of diversity and inclusion? What should we eliminate? And general questions and concerns. And during those listening stages, we did define diversity and inclusion, simply put, is African-Americans, Hispanic, Latino, women, disability, faith-based, veterans, and gender, gender equality to include our LGBTQ community. We had a great plan set ahead of us and wanted to interact with everyone in the school district. However, Due to COVID-19 limitations, we were only able to work with four buildings in the district and speak with teachers. Please be assured, if you still want to have that conversation, my contact information will be at the end of this presentation, and you can reach out to me, and I will have that courageous conversation with you in our stage one listening. After listening to the teachers in those four buildings, we looked and reviewed the outcomes and we pulled out the common themes that we continuously would hear across the district. What do we do well? Well, cultural awareness events to include Black History Month and Hispanic Heritage Awareness Month. We include special ed students, we celebrate our veterans, and we have extracurricular activities and clubs. What can we do better? That created a lot of conversation and a lot of courageousness from those involved. We can do better at creating a diverse staff to be reflective of our student body. Education about differences. We can eliminate the barriers. We can improve communication and understanding. We can include students with disabilities. And most importantly, we can be consistent across the district. What should we eliminate? Well, we want to eliminate the biases, the culture shock, the stereotypes, and the fear of talking about culture, race, differences, ethnicities, and opinions. And most importantly, we want to eliminate the us against the students. We are not against the students. 
And last but not least, we talked about overall thoughts, recommendations, and concerns. And what we pulled from that is teachers, you're asking for more training. You don't want us to make ethical assumptions about students because students come from blended families and different racial backgrounds. We wanna be aware and embrace differences. And most importantly, we wanna understand generational and learned behaviors. But what's the takeaway from that? Well, what we took away is most importantly, we wanna start having diversity training. Why? Well, diverse and inclusive workforces are ones that recognize the importance of differences, often unique perspectives while valuing the ideas and efforts of every individual. Here we have it, our district, 43.3% minority. We have a lot of culture in our district. So we wanna to begin to have those trainings and discussions, trainings on microaggressions, biases, privileges. But what do I mean by microaggressions? Have you ever heard the statement, well, they're pretty smart to be, you go ahead and fill in the blanks. That's a microaggression. We wanna be able to have those open, candid discussions. We wanna have training in bridges out of poverty. Our district is 73% economically disadvantaged. So let's take a step back and focus on the mental models. They include one, the poverty model, which is built on relationships. Two, the middle class model, which is built on achievements. And three, the upper class model, which is built on connections. What we wanna do is we don't just wanna run through an eight hour training. We wanna look at those mental models in different segments and work them in and how we work with our students, our community, and our family. For instance, if I'm in the poverty model, which is built on relationships, the more relationships I have, the more connected I am to succeed. So if my car breaks down, I'm probably gonna call my dad, my uncle, maybe a friend who might know a friend who can help fix my brakes. But if I'm in the middle class model, I'm probably gonna call an auto mechanic and get my car into the shop. There's a difference. We all think differently and we can learn to work together with one another, although we think differently. Here's another example. Have you ever heard that statement, which can be seen as a microaggression? Why don't they work hard like I did? My family and I, we worked hard. We went to school. We were resourceful and that's great. And it sounds like you and your family come from the middle-class model. Achievement, achievement drives you, has you seek things out. But there's some families that live in the poverty class model and it's based on relationship. So their way of success, if they're looking for that next job or how to get into college, they're gonna go to their relationship wheel and they're gonna determine who has what they deem a good job or who's been to college and they'll make the phone call to that individual person versus in the achievement model, we make the phone call or we seek out the institution, which we might do this through website searches or job boards. So again, working together in the Bridges Out of Poverty training, we just wanna take a step back and just look at the different mentalities and figure out how can we build bridges so we can move forward in the same direction. Another takeaway is we learn from some of the teachers we work with, they wanna continue that courageous conversation. Some of those conversations lasted 30 to 40 minutes. And I believe there were great feedbacks as we were learning and understanding each other. In those courageous conversations, rest assured, there's three guidelines that I live by. Number one, speak your truth because it's your truth and no one can take that away from you. Two, be prepared to be uncomfortable. Sometimes your opinions or your life experiences, it may make someone else uncomfortable. But three, Let's always seek a resolution and move forward. Move forward to impact change, to impact inclusion, and to make sure we're creating a diversified workforce programs and support services. But what we're gonna do to keep those conversations authentic and make them a little less uncomfortable, we're gonna use these cards I call, what stands between us. And here are a couple examples. I pulled up some cards to show you what the cards are like. One, what are some misconceptions or ideas 
that you have about other ethnicities. Sometimes we have questions that we want to ask, but we don't want to be labeled. Am I right? I know I'm right. <laughs> How does it feel to be discriminated against by your own race? Hmm. Do you feel that communication between ethnicities are getting better or worse? And for my last example, when it comes to courageous conversations, why do you think that being colorblind is a good thing? We've all heard that. I don't see color. That's a great discussion for us to have and why. We'll talk with one another and we'll understand the hidden rules of each culture and we'll teach one another as well how to operate within those hidden rules because our number one focus is to make sure we have successful students leaving and interacting and engaging in the community that we're a part of Fremont City School District. But last but not least, our takeaway, and this is one that's dear to me, is our diversity and inclusion strategic planning team. I am reaching out to all those that are passionate and interested in doing this great work to join or express interest in this team. What this team will do based on the feedback that we received thus far, we're gonna work on creating inclusive hiring practices. We're gonna work on training and courageous conversations for teachers and staff. This is ongoing. We don't want it to be a start stop. We want to be there continuously for you. We want to help you with resources that you engage well in the, in the classroom. We also want to work on programs for cultural awareness and student success. We have a lot of great programs going on. We want to build upon them or enhance them or give them more advertisement. And we want to create programs, services, and support that engage our community and most importantly, our parent involvement. Well, I think I've said a mouthful when it comes to diversity and inclusion, and I'm so excited to be a part of this team and to work side by side with all of you. A little takeaway about diversity and inclusion that I want to leave with you today. Diversity, it's not an imposition, it's an advantage. Inclusion, it's not a problem, it's the solution. And working together it's more than a good idea. It's essential to individual and organizational success. Well, my time is winding down. I know you have other things you want to learn to help engage in your classroom, but know that diversity and inclusion is just as important. But again, if you want to be a part of the Diversity and Inclusion Strategic Planning Committee, and I invite you all in, please send me an email to express your interest at C at fremontschools.net. Again, Mullen, M-U-L-L-E-N-C, at fremontschools.net. And one of my quotes that I love, and I love to quote, is, be the reason someone feels welcomed, seen, heard, valued, loved, and most importantly, supported. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do for Fremont City Schools and our teachers. Your work does not go unseen and you are valued and appreciated. And most importantly, be giant.